Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Nemo Pack. How are you guys doing today? How's life? Gaze into my beautiful eyes. No, 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 no. Not that much. It might lose its beauty. So in between the episodes, I did work a little bit on our base. I have finished our factory. It's not functional, but at least we do have a functional chimney. Just to clarify, I am calling it non-functional because we don't use it that much. We also had a little bit of a mob issue, so I decided to take matters in my own hands. Now we have Tesla coils. And honestly speaking, so far so good. And the best part is, they also fry the flies, so I can't really find anything to complain about. Except the noise. Anyways, if you guys remember last episode we did spend a few hours on making a creative tank for hydrofluoric acid, and today we want to work on DT fuel. Good morning, copy. As you guys already know, DT fuel is essentially a combination of deuterium and tritium and it is used inside the fusion reactor from mechanism and it's also a gas. But thankfully if we put it inside the rotary concentrator, we can also get a liquid version. And just in case you didn't know, using DT fuel directly inside the reactor actually gives us a huge power boost, rather than using deuterium and tritium separately. And the main reason that people don't really do that, it's because it's not practical, because the fusion reactor will burn all the DT fuel and you will lose everything. I'm guessing there is no preference we start with deuterium. We can get deuterium in heavy water inside an electronic separator. So let's get heavy water. And I think we're going to go with, I don't know, like six pumps? Also, I'm ordering so many quantum entangle porters. How many lapis do we have left? A uh, thousand blocks. I just changed the location of digital miners, so this is not that good. It's fine, we're going to use our non-functioning factory in order to make lapis sheets. Yeah, this should keep it running for a while. So we're good. So deuterium is something that we're going to get from heavy water and tritium is something that we're going to get from lithium which we are producing over here. Yes, this is lithium. And since this is going to be a temporary setup and we're going to remove it today, I'm just going to set it up over here. So they're close. As I have already mentioned, we are going to have six pumps. If we need more, I shall make more. And as you guys probably already know, the pumps from mechanism have to be placed above water. It does not have to be an infinite source. One water source block is also enough. And the most important thing that we have to do before giving them power is to give them a filter. The filter upgrade from mechanism is an upgrade specifically for pumps so that they can get heavy water from water. So we just give each and every one of them one upgrade and I made extra. It's okay. We give them power and we should get heavy water very slowly. The reason that it's better to apply the upgrade before you actually give power to the pumps is that if this guy fills in with water, then you have to empty it. And as usual, that is a pain. I have also fully upgraded the pumps and we are getting heavy water at a relatively decent rate. But one thing that you should remember is that we're not in a hurry. Anyways, we are going to get oxygen and deuterium and we are going to void the oxygen. We don't need it. So I made the lithium, but I did not make a valve. I'm a very weird person, right Cubby? So we have our deuterium, let us focus on tritium. And of course we're going to start by installing a valve. Tritium itself is actually something incredibly easy to get. We have a lot of HTPE. And that was a quest. We are going to convert it into sheets. And we are going to use one of those sheets in order to make a solar neutron activator. Maybe we should make, I don't know, like two of them? Because they're not very fast. Oh, this is bronze. Really? It's not a huge problem? I was just a little bit surprised. That's it. Getting bronze is not that difficult. We have four over here and four more over here. We're good. And here are the solar neutron activators. So here is the part which has been confused a little bit because lithium is a fluid. So did we need to have a rotary concentrator or you just do it? Yeah, we need a rotary concentrator. Fine by me. So we take liquid lithium, we convert it into a gas using a rotary concentrator, and the gas version of lithium goes inside the solar neutron activator and we just get tritium. So ladies and gentlemen, we have tritium and we have deuterium. You do not connect? Yes, of course you don't connect. I have to set it to output. Both of them go inside the chemical infuser and we get DT fuel. And we need three sets of upgrades. Uh, four actually, because we need one more rotary concentrator. And the main reason that we need an extra rotary concentrator is that this DT fuel is a gas. We need the fluid. And I would assume it's not a very bad idea to get a few whole rounds. It's not a crazy recipe. We can get a bajillion. I'm out of lapis. But it's perfectly fine. We have five stacks. Almost. We actually need these guys in order to kickstart the fusion reactor, so I'm going to make a bunch. They don't really consume that much DT fuel, I think it's like 10 millibuckets, yes. That should be more than enough, we can process the DT fuel. And there you go, that is liquid DT fuel. Almost 70 buckets. 80. 
do we have like a huge backlog or these guys are fast? Oh, we're out of heavy water. Okay. And yes, we kind of had 800 buckets backlog. We have 512 buckets of DT fuel over here and we have a backlog of almost 1,400. So I would assume it's a good time to start filling up the tank. Obviously, we are going to need more quantum in tank reporters and we are missing circuits. Circuits are a pain and I have no idea how I should start making an induction matrix. Because in addition to requiring a lot of circuits, we also need a lot of bitumen. Well, we do have a decent amount, but I'm not even sure if it's enough. Because here is the point, in order to make one basic induction cell, we need one steel casing and that is four bitumen. I think in order to make an ultimate one, you need 64 of the basic ones, so that's a lot of bitumen. Also, if we want to make an ultimate induction provider, we need a lot of circuits. But on a very positive note, we just need one ultimate induction provider, and that's it. One silly problem at a time, let us get our quantum entangler porters. DT fuel liquid, we need power for our pumps, and we need DT fuel over here in order to fill it in. Are we good? Yes. And it's purple. You know, at first I was really worried about the lights, but thankfully the fluid actually overrides them. Obviously, we are not going to stay here and watch everything because this could take a few hours. So we need to focus on other stuff. Oh, rotten flesh. Someone had an accident. Our backlog is gone, but our production rate is actually decent. We are generating 112 milli buckets of DT fuel per tick. It's not that bad. And we have already filled in nine layers. Almost. Although I keep saying that we are not in a hurry for DT fuel, and there is one reason for it. Because in order to make a fusion reactor from mechanism, you might notice that we need polonium. Look at my beautiful eyes. Do I look like someone who has polonium? No. But we are going to get it today. We just need a reactor. The problem is, we already have a reactor. Hello? Yes, as I was saying, I already made a reactor, but I actually made it before we started working on the creative tanks. So maybe we should move it back to our base? For the moment, I have no use for the celestial altar and I'm really not happy with the design. So we're going to remove it and put a reactor over here. So I did move the reactor. How much time do you think it took me? Almost one hour because the reactor was not forming. When I was removing the celestial altar, apparently we had a ghost block, so the structure was invalid. Now it does work. Also a few points. You might notice that this reactor is very different from the ones that I normally make, and it is very tall instead of being chunky. The reason for that is actually very simple. In order to make the control rods, which you see up there, you need one elite control circuit, which requires two integrated circuit, and one advanced circuit, which also needs two more integrated circuits. So we're just saving on circuits. Also using glass is not the best thing to do because it's going to cause lag, but I didn't have a choice because the reactor casing itself requires steel casing and that needs bitumen. And that's not a renewable resource. So basically we have an 11 by 11 by 18 reactor, 75 fuel assemblies and 5 control rods. Also this is the part where everybody is going to disagree with me, but I'm going to do the same thing that I always do. And that is to use a lot of sinks and a lot of pipes. So there is a limit on how much these mechanical pipes can extract from a sink and we don't need that many sinks, we just need more pipes. But sinks are incredibly cheap, pipes are incredibly cheap, we just spam them. And honestly speaking, making sure that we have enough water by spamming sinks and pipes is much easier than making calculations. Besides, I'm garbage at math. So those are going to be inputs for water. This is going to be input for fuel. I don't really need to extract the steam, but we are going to have an output for steam. You know, just in case. And most importantly, we need an output for the waste. I think eventually I'm going to make our SPS chamber over here, so we're going to direct it this way. Hey, Cubby. Can I have a few quantum entangler porters? Obviously, the first one is going to be used for fissile fuel. Very good, we are getting it. And how much are we producing? 128. Well, that is actually more than enough because our maximum capacity is like 75 millibuckets. So we are producing extra and I'm not going to complain. Are you getting fuel? Yes. So you guys already know the drill. We are going to burn the fissile fuel, we are going to get steam, and we are going to get nuclear waste. We can process the nuclear waste into two byproducts. One of them is plutonium in an isotopic centrifuge, which is going to give us plutonium pellets, and we actually need it in order to make the SPS casings in order to make the antimatter. And of course the other one is polonium inside the solar neutron activator, which we can further process it into pellets or antimatter. So we are going to have both of them. But the isotopic centrifuge is not going to be used for that long, because I think we need like two steps of plutonium and that's it. Anyways, we need to set up the processes very soon, but I just want to see if our reactor works. So we're going to have a waste barrel over here as a buffer and let us give it a test. The burn rate is going to be 0.1 millibuckets per tick and we just start you. The wiki actually tells us that we have to increase the burn rate very slowly, but um, I don't know, can we go like 2 millibuckets? And we're also getting nuclear waste. That is good. Oh, you can actually see the water going in. 
well we know it works, I have not messed it up, we are getting fuel, we are getting steam and we are getting waste. So let us start making polonium and plutonium. Later on I'm actually going to work a little bit on aesthetics because this is incredibly boring but for the moment let us focus on the function. So we have nuclear waste, let us make plutonium. The isotopic centrifuge that we have over here is going to make us plutonium the gas. We need to extract it, put it inside the PRC and provide the PRC with water. I forgot that I have to make some waste barrels so we have one stack and that should be more than enough. Because here is the point, for each plutonium pellet we get one bucket of spent nuclear waste. So essentially each one of these waste barrels that you see over here is enough in order to make one stack of plutonium pellets. Of course we can make it a little bit more neat by doing something like this because we don't have to see it anyways. So that we can just use one quantum entangle porter in order to power both of the machines. You have power and you also have power. Good. So if we cut off this connection and extract the waste, we are getting plutonium. And whenever we have one bucket of plutonium, we will use one fluorite and we will get one pellet. For polonium, we have to be a little bit more careful because yes, we are going to use the polonium in order to get the pellets, but we also need to have a connection in order to get antimatter. So I think we're going to have the PRC over there. We are going to cut off the connection for this one. We will also provide it with water and most importantly, power. Each polonium pellet is also going to give us one bucket of nuclear waste, but since we need much more polonium pellets than plutonium pellets, uh, we need a lot of barrels. Cause you know, we need to make the supercharged coil, we need to make the mecha suit, we need to get the QIO network, we need a lot. But for the start we're going to go with 15 and that should be enough in order to make 15 stacks of polonium pellets. And just to clarify, whenever we have enough polonium pellets and we want to make antimatter, I'm just going to turn off this machine and continue the connection from here to the SPS chamber. So it's going to be something like this. I also brought some upgrades for all the machines. And the centrifuge itself is very power hungry, so we just give you like two upgrades, that should be more than enough. And just in case something goes wrong, I'm going to chunk load the place by giving this guy an anchor upgrade. Because the reactor itself and most of the waste barrels are within one chunk, so we should be safe. I just turned it on one more time and we're doing okay. We are at 2 millibuckets per tick and I'm going to increase it to, I don't know, for the moment 10. Also, I don't know if it's necessary to say, but whenever we have enough plutonium, I'm just going to turn off this machine and then we will get polonium. But we do have a plutonium pellet. Nice. Oh, I forgot to eject you. Um, how do we do that? Gases, output, that should be fine. Yes. We also increase the burn rate to 15, just to make sure that we're actually doing everything very slowly. Can we go to 20? Are we good? Uh, I just wanted to check how much uranium we have. Uh, we have 100,000. So we're good. At 30 millibuckets, we are still in green. And at 40, we are still at green. So I can go to like 50? Maybe? We can burn at a maximum rate of 75 millibuckets per tick, but I'm just going to set it for 65 for the moment. You know, just in case something goes wrong. Oh, and I was supposed to remove this. It's okay, we're going to make a little bit more, and then I will dismantle it. And in the meantime, I completely forgot about our DT fuel. It has not been a crazy amount of time later, but we do have one stack of polonium pellets. We also have one stack of plutonium pellets. And oddly enough, neither of them are quests. And you might also notice a miracle in Minecraft. We are getting uranium almost at the same rate as we are burning it. That is because darkness is watching us. Well, in the meantime, we have 34 more. We can literally make the mecha suit. But I'm really not in a hurry. I like my armor. You seem to be full as well. That is good. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a while later and I did manage to work a little bit on our reactor and hopefully it looks less boring. I did manage to put one of those big fans from Chisel up there and it's a pain because you cannot determine where the center of the block is going to be, so I was very lucky. Also, these tanks do not serve any purpose, it's just like we're pumping the water in because our pumping setup down here looks really bad. We also have a very decent supply of polonium as well as plutonium. I think we don't even have to produce plutonium anymore. Although it depends how many we have. 239. Uh, we go to 300. Also in other news, this is the final layer. Well, not the final layer, the final three. Our second Chitty creative tank is also full and we have an infinite supply of DT fuel. We are going to use it in order to power two fusion reactors and that should give us somewhere around 52 million RF per tick, I would think. Of course that is going to be more than enough to power the SPS chamber and our entire base. But that got me thinking, is there a possibility of making an induction matrix? 
I mean the induction cell itself which is going to hold the power is not that expensive. The only painful part is that we need 256 bitumen in order to make one ultimate induction cell. We have 1200 in our applied energistic system so that's not going to be a huge issue. The one which has me worried is the ultimate induction provider. Cause if we want to have two fusion reactors we are going to generate 52 million RF per tick and we need to have an ultimate induction provider anyways. Almost 200 integrated circuits and 200 bitumen. It's actually not that bad. So I think here's what we're going to do. We don't need DT fuel anymore, so I can remove the setup. And instead we're going to use the lithium in order to get lithium. That was a very confusing sentence, I meant the dust. So we need to do a few changes over here. The lithium that you see over here is a liquid, we need to convert it into a gas. That lithium gas has to go inside a chemical crystallizer, and if we give it power, that should give us lithium dust. Very good. And since we're going to need quite a bit, I'm going to give it all the upgrades. Also, can you eject into a chest? No. Uh, why? Is it the wrong side? Oh yeah, it was the wrong side. Okay, it does work. There is no point of setting up the induction matrix today because we are not generating that much RF anyways. But let us at least make the cells. I have already prepared some lapis sheets. And that should be more than enough to make us the integrated circuits because we were missing, I don't know, like 100? Another thing that we need is bitumen and we're out. Because the tanks are full, we need to empty them. And by emptying them, I just put them inside the ME system. That's it. Very good. We're starting to get bitumen. We have a decent supply of lithium. That was a quest. And polonium was not. <laughs> I'm confused. So what are we missing? 36 integrated circuits. And we have 33 of them. Oh, I'm starving. 35 and 36. And yes, we can just craft it. Perfect. Although one thing that you should remember is that we're going to consume a tremendous amount of gold and we don't have that much. But that was an interesting number, 6666. I don't have the best system for auto crafting so it does take a while. But on a positive note, it's ready. We are also missing a little bit of lithium in order to make the induction cell. We need 96. Oh that's enough. So we are also going to make one ultimate induction cell and that should hold <laughs> 1.6 trillion RF. Anyway guys, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one, bye bye.